You're watching Shooting USA, America's number one source for firearms news and information. It fires a half inch diameter projectile at the rate of 500 rounds per minute. It is effective at nearly a mile and a quarter and has become the standard to which the world's full auto firearms are inevitably compared. Talk about length of service to our country. The Army adopted the Browning 50 Cal in 1921, and it is still on the battlefield nearly nine decades later. The Browning M2, or Mod Deuce to its admirers, has more than earned a place of honor as one of history's guns. This is one of the greatest firearms of the 20th century and the 21st century, and will be for at least another generation. This firearm is the Modus, the Browning M2 50 caliber machine gun. And while the word is often overused, this truly is an awesome weapon. Wonderful weapon. It's heavy, but it's reliable. David Stishon is the U.S. Army Infantry Historian. He says nearly a century after John Browning invented it, the M2 is still full auto, state of the art. But it's still the basic design that uh, John Browning uh, came up with. It is simple, it is rugged, and it does the job. And for nearly a century, it has done the job for Americans going to war. Mounted on American tanks in Europe and in the Philippines. Mounted as an anti-aircraft weapon on land and sea in the South Pacific. Six to eight Browning 50 cals lined the wings of our fighter planes in dogfights with Zeros and Messerschmitts. Our pilots gave their enemy the whole nine yards, an expression coined by British flyers describing the length of a machine gun ammo belt. It was carried on when American fighter aircraft were defending B-17s and B-24s in flights over Germany. Give them the whole nine yards meant shoot it down and use everything you have in the wings. And in America's bombers, the M2 also played a tremendous role. In the hands of our gunners in World War II, protecting B-17s and B-24s, American bombers carried a dozen or more Browning 50 cals in the nose, in the tail, in the belly, and fuselage. It is impossible to know how many American planes and lives the M2 saved in the war. But let us not forget that they not only shot down airplanes, but they blew up thousands of trains, trucks, and everything on the ground with close air support, allowing Patton and other armies to sweep across France. One of the most famous of all soldiers in World War II, Lieutenant Audie Murphy, received America's highest wartime honor for heroics in battle with the 50 Cal. But Lieutenant Audie Murphy, when he earned the Medal of Honor, was holding off the enemy with a 50 caliber machine gun. But for all its successes in World War II, that is not where the M2's history began. It was near the end of the first Great War, when the U.S. Army asked John Browning to build a weapon to equal Germany's bolt-action anti-tank gun. He looked at that and said, why do we want to go back to that old technology? So he came first with a semi-automatic version and says, what the heck, made it full automatic. Browning's upscaled version of his model 1919 30 caliber machine gun did not see action in that first Great War. But Ma Deuce has been in every conflict since, in Korea, Vietnam, and even to today. This 50 is mounted on the Army's Striker, a modern light armored fighting vehicle with sophisticated laser sighting system. Well, what that does is uh, it, it locates the range of your target that you're pointing at. All you gotta do is press this button. It just seems like there's just uh, no improving John Browning's original design. Jeff Reed is arms curator at the National Infantry Museum at Fort Benning, Georgia. He calls the Browning M2 a brute, a soldier's friend, 
and a work of genius. A work of genius, most definitely, and a, a genius just in its simplicity. And I think that's also its longevity, uh, able to endure all kinds of environmental extremes. Uh, anything that the soldier can throw at it, the weapon just continues to operate. Jeff believes the grandchildren of today's soldiers may still be using the M2 in battle. Fort Benning Staff Sergeant Adam Prince absolutely agrees. He says the M2 is a fearsome weapon to bring to the fight, as it has been for nearly 100 years. If it works, don't, don't change it, you know? If it's not broken, we'll try to fix it. Infantry historian David Stishon says in a century of service, the M2 has secured its place in history. This and the Gatling gun are probably the most important machine guns ever, and this one is a true machine gun. Another of John Browning's masterpieces, the Big 50, officially being used to stop light-armored enemy vehicles. Officially. <laughs>